Okay, so let's learn about solder. And uh, if you want to solder something in audio, we use solder to connect wires together. So I have for you here a piece of silver wire and some uh, Teflon coated uh, copper wire. So these are the two metals that we usually use in audio. And to make sure that signal jumps from one to the other, we need to make a physical connection between the two and then add solder, one of these solders or the ones you have to make sure that the connection is permanent and then the current that runs through one of the wires can jump to the other wire. And uh, it's not just wires, but the wires can be the the legs of uh, capacitors or inductors, transformers, diodes, tubes, etc. So here I have for you these three dice. They represent the audio metals. And then the small one, this is copper, silver and gold. Unfortunately, I do not have any gold wire to show for you. So we are just uh, copper and silver, but the, the, the relative size differences between these three atoms is like the size differences we see here. So when we look at the periodic table, you see in the middle of the table, you see the metals and, and the smallest here that's copper, underneath silver and then gold. So they are basically so, so silver is basically a big brother of copper and gold is the big brother of silver. And when you look at that, let's magnify the picture. So you see these numbers, they, they show you the electron shells of these atoms. And as you see, they start out the same way, like two eight, like two electrons at the first shell, eight at the second, 18 at the third, and then on the fourth shell, Copper has uh, one electron, but silver has a full 18 complement and then one electron at the fifth shell. And silver, 18 electron at the fifth shell and one electron at the sixth. And then has as a bunch for the fourth shell. So basically all three of these atoms, all of these metals, they start out with uh, two, eight, 18. Uh, at, the, at their initial shells or inner shells and they end up with 18 and one electron on their outermost shells. And, and it's this electron structure that gives them their uh, unparalleled property to have very low resistance for electricity and also very high electronegativity. So what are these things? Uh, so resistivity or resistance uh, means that when you pass current through a conductor, it means that the electrons move from one atom to the next. And, and, and the movement of an uh, electron to the next atom results in production of heat. And the lower the resistance, it means the less amount of heat is produced per moving electron. And uh, the situation is best for silver. So when the electron moves from one silver atom to the next, it results in the least heat. And then I think the second best is gold, and then the third best is copper. And then basically the rest of the uh, metals, the rest of the atoms produce even more heat than any of these do. And if you, for example, look at tin, it produces a, about 20 times, I think about 20 times as much heat as uh, silver does when an electron passes from one atom to the next. That's why it has much higher resistance. Um, and there is another property of these metals when an electron is bumped from one atom to the next, it's called electronegativity. And it means that uh, having a higher electronegativity, an atom uh, pulls the electron stronger. And out of these three metals, gold has the highest electronegativity. So it means that if you take away from an, an electron from a gold atom, let's say by 
by uh, plug by connecting a battery with a piece of uh, gold wire and then you will have current running through that wire when the when the uh, when the battery removes an atom from a gold atom it will attract another atom from its neighbor with vicious force silver has slightly lower electronegativity than gold and copper has noticeably lower electronegativity and when you look at all these elements the electronegativity is, is really much much less than any of these three and because of that high electronegativity and low resistance that's why these three elements can be used for audio um, and you would think that uh, uh, other elements could be used as well when you think about uh, Newtonian mechanism, Newtonian physics and, uh, and what we knew about physics in the Middle Ages and about 1700s, 1900s, based on that theory, if, for example, if you have a tin conductor, which is like 20 times the diameter of silver, that wire, will, those two wires will have the same resistance. So basically, if you have a, a thick solder like that, then that should have the same uh, sound quality as a thin silver wire but if you try it out and you substitute your a, a piece of a signal wire in your amplifier from uh, your skinny silver let's say uh, the wire that goes from the, the RCA jack to the input grid of your uh, driver tube for example and maybe that's like a, a, a five centimeters, two inches long of wire, and it's maybe you have a gauge 30 silver. If you put this uh, solder there, that's mostly tin, and it's uh, more than 20 times thick than it, uh, so its resistance is even lower than that of silver, based on those people who cry snake oil and say that all you need is low resistance wire, you plug these in, and then you expect that you will have better base, better sun in every respect. Well, uh, we have tried it out. If you put solder instead of your wire, but even though you keep it at a lower resistance, the sound will be deplorable. It will be really, really bad. Uh, so, so clearly something else is going on in audio and, uh, and you need more from your conductors than pure resistance. But uh, as I emphasize to tell it to all of you guys, is that uh, do not believe whatever anyone says, try it out for yourself. And I'm telling it to you guys because I have tried them out. So when, when, you, when you hear things that, that sound hard to believe or, or far-fetched or, or is different when, uh, compared to what you hear <laughs> at uh, established youtube channels or maybe not so established but high follower channels and they say something and then you hear something else then my suggestion is try it out for yourself don't just believe it and uh, and here i give you some additional explanation so why that that resistance only camp is mistaken because for them it is true that even though if you plop in just solder in your audio and expect it to sound good well dc current can be carried through that wire at higher amounts than through a skinny piece of silver that is all true however that applies only for dc current now i have a really sad and sobering news for everyone is that the music you are hearing is pure ac it doesn't have any dc component in it and if it has DC, DC means zero hertz. You cannot hear zero hertz. It means if you have a DC passed to your uh, speaker driver cone, like here there's a speaker driver. If you apply DC, it means that the cone will plop out and then stay out there. It's not moving anything. So, so when you apply DC, air is not moving. So whatever the effect is for DC, you will not hear it at least not directly. However, all of the metals also have an impact on alternating current. And perhaps everyone has a computer at home or cell phone and you maybe 
had the audacity to open it up and play with it, toy with it, maybe cut a few wires across. And then you notice that uh, all of the wire uh, in your computer, it's copper wire, but all of them are silver plated. And why is that? It's because copper is not a good high frequency conductor. And the reason for that is that uh, when they draw copper, so it means they form wire out of uh, a copper ore, then that wire, because of the drawing process, will have directivity. So there will be copper domains in it, and the way they organize, they will allow alternating current uh, to flow through it. But when you flip the wire in a different orientation, it will have a different effect at the current. And that's because the, all of the domain structure in the copper creates a rectification effect. So copper behaves as a rectifier at very high frequencies, and that's why we need to add silver into the mixture, because silver doesn't care about directionality. So that's why when you have an audio cable, an interconnect cable, if it's copper and it comes from a reputable uh, manufacturer, such as like uh, Kimber cables or harmonic technologies, they put the direction of the, of the cable on it. So they, they show that you should put this is the source and that's the load direction. And, uh, and that's because uh, they mark how the copper wire is running within that interconnect. And uh, actually you can flip it around so you can make it like uh, run at the opposite direction and maybe in your system that will sound better. But to do that, you have to flip both cables. So the left channel and right channel, flip them together and, and, and uh, try out which is the one that works for you. However, what you should never do is have one in one orientation, like left channel this way and right channel flipped over. And that's why many audio gear sound uh, not as good as they could because when they install them and they wire them up, they don't pay attention to the wire polarity. And uh, that creates a, a loss of transparency. For silver wire, you have no such trouble and you don't need to worry about the orientation of the wire because I noticed that it doesn't matter what, which orientation you install silver wire, it will not have an effect on the sound. So going back, this is the size of a copper atom and the silver is like, this copper is in, in the middle of the silver, but it has additional shells built around it. It's like, like a golf ball within a football. And then the gold is like, like there's the copper in the center, then, then there's the silver around it, and then there's even more and you have this big, big atom. And, um, and eventually, uh, the differences between sound are such that copper doesn't like high frequencies. So, so copper is a good conductor for, uh, for, for us humans, mid-range and low frequency sounds, but at high frequency we start hearing uh, rectification effects beyond about 10 kilohertz or so. Silver doesn't suffer these effects, that's why in electronics we use them. And even though there is like the main frequencies in the megahertz and gigahertz range, but, uh, and, and that's where, where silver is still a fantastic conductor, but they use a combination of silver plated copper because it's much cheaper than pure silver. And when you look at the high frequency conduction, there's something called the skin effect. And it means that the higher the frequency, the more the electrons that travel in your conductor, they will be drawn to the surface of the conductor. If the frequency is high enough, then the current will flow at the surface. And that's because uh, of, of the wire's internal resistance and the uh, electrons try to find the least resistance. If you have to move High frequency means that the electron moves a tiny bit, moves here a bit, and then direction reverses, it goes back, moves a little bit, then goes back. And so basically at very high frequency, the electrons just oscillate at one spot. 
And guess what? In the center of the conductor, that's where uh, most of the heat is generated. And as heat is generated, the resistance of the wire increases. So it means that it will push the electron flow to the side. So that's one of the effects that will uh, create the skin effect is that as the center of the wire doesn't have a good heat sinking ability, the current will be forced to go find the least uh, resistance path and you will have more and more at, at the surface. And imagine now you have a, a copper wire in the middle and, and silver on the surface. So basically, if you have a 100 megahertz signal or a gigahertz range for computers, then even though the center is copper, then all of your current, like 99.99% of your gigahertz current will run in the silver sheeting of the copper. And uh, when we look for gold, gold has uh, a little bit more higher resistance than silver. So, so that's why it's not as good in uh, very high frequency usage as, as silver. But uh, when you listen to gold sound, it has a more balanced sound to it. So the high frequencies uh, for silver, uh, it, it sounds as if it has no limitation on the high frequency capability. And most systems uh, can be overloaded by silver. And that's why audio companies use gold as a compound. If you look at Mundorf, they add uh, gold to their high-end capacitors. Or you look at Duelund, they have uh, gold capacitors and stuff like that. And they add the gold because it helps to tame down the high frequencies, which become apparent when you shift to silver from copper. However, and, and a lot of people blame the silver for that, that if you use silver wire instead of copper, then, uh, then you get shrill high frequencies. And the thing with that is that uh, silver will allow you to hear uh, the high frequencies from, uh, and, and the impact is like 10 kilohertz plus. So when you change from copper to silver, you see this effect I mean, you hear it with your human ear from 10 kilohertz up that that something is fundamentally different in your audio. And, and the effect is twice. One of them is you can hear those frequencies much better. There is no rectification errors that the copper uh, gives to the sound. But also because now the silver can transmit the top end, this region, up to the hundreds of kilohertz regions properly, you will start to hear the problems that are caused by copper at other parts of your audio chain. So for example, let's say you have copper transformers, copper inductors, your resistors have uh, copper legs. So all of the problems that are uh, introduced by those copper components, you will be able to hear them through the increased uh, high frequency handling of the silver. And when you add gold to it, gold has higher resistance, so it pushes down the sensitivity for the high frequency range. And that's why it has a taming uh, uh, effect, so it brings the, the sound more to a mid-range. So like it gives like a mid-range shine to the picture. But it's extremely expensive, and that's why all the gold stuff is, is super expensive. And then, as you have seen, my channel is called Real World Audio. So I'm not going to play around with gold, because that's not a real world solution. <laughs> it's not for real world audiophiles, that's for audiophiles who don't care about money. And my channel, this is really more geared towards uh, realistic expectations what any of you can do at home and it's a sort of time travel device that if I had advice for me at the time when I was a college student and I had very little money and I just started out with audio what would be the advice to my young self and that's my same advice that I have for my fellow audiophiles at the beginning of their audio journey is don't be afraid of silver because even though when you purchase a silver cable, like an interconnect or speaker cable, they are 
way more, like an order of magnitude more expensive than copper cables. But if you go through the DIY route, you can make an excellent silver cable for cheaper price than buying a good quality copper cable. So that's the introduction about wires. And the next uh, episode will be about what solder does to the mixture. And when you add solder it, how does that modify the effect that these particles, that these audio metals have on sound? Thank you. And if you liked, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so to get the newer videos. Bye bye.